Alex Holloway. Sentences can be simple sentences with one main idea in it, like I eat an apple, or sentences can be complex with more than one idea. For instance, the this apple, which I picked from the tree when it was ripe, is delicious. So, I've got more than one idea in there. I have me picking the apple and me um, claiming that it's delicious. They're all still in the same sentence, but it's a more complex sentence. So let's stick with this idea of complex sentences. Complex sentences uh, that are made up of more than one idea can be broken into, into their ideas. So let me give you an example. George, who was king of the jungle, kept hitting trees when he was swinging from tree to tree. So in this sentence, we have three ideas, right? We have the idea that George is king of the jungle. We have the idea that George hits trees. And we have the idea that he hits them when he is swinging between the trees. So each one of these ideas in the sentence is identified by a verb. Right? So George, who is king of the jungle, hit trees when he was swinging from tree to tree. We have three verbs, therefore we have three ideas in the sentence. These ideas in grammar, we call these clauses. And there are two types of clauses. There's the main clause, sometimes called the independent clause. And this is the main idea of the sentence. It's the clause that can be its own sentence when you take everything else away. And then the other type are called subordinate clauses, sometimes called dependent clauses. In fact, I'll use both of those interchangeably. Um, and what these are, these are those supporting ideas. These are the ones that help to flesh out the sentence and make it into a complex sentence that give us more information about it. Um, these are parts of the sentence that cannot, if you were to take it out and to try to make it its own thing, it can't be its own thing. They are dependent on the main idea. They can't, they can't be their own thing. They are, they rely on the main idea. So let's go back to our first silly sentence. George, and then we have like this comma in there. Who is king of the jungle? Who is, oh, there's that is there. So that must be a clause. We'll take that out. Kept hitting trees. George kept hitting trees. There we go. That's a clause. We can put, take that out and put it on its own thing. When he was swinging from tree to tree. There we go. We got another thing. We can take that out. Now we have our three clauses and we've identified them. George kept hitting trees. Who is king of the jungle? when he was swinging from tree to tree. And if you were to try to make any of those into a sentence, there's only one that you could put a period after it and it would make sense. So the main clause is George kept hitting trees. The other parts about it, they are subordinate clauses. They are dependent clauses that tell us more about it. The first one, who is king of the jungle? Right? That's a subordinate clause that tells us more about George. It's relating back to him to tell us more information. When he was swinging from tree to tree, that's another clause that tells us when he was doing something. So we have some sort of a, we have some sort of a time clause going on. For clauses to work, they have to have a verb. They also have to have a subject, but sometimes the subject isn't as as clear as you would like it to be. So, for instance, for that who is king of the jungle, um, what is the subject? Is it king? Is it who? However, they do have a subject and a verb. Definitely a verb. Always look out for the verbs. If you see a verb, you know you've got a clause. So let's try some. I'll give you some more examples that only have two clauses, a main clause and a subordinate clause, and maybe it'll make more sense when we have less to, to deal with. The slave girl who was cursing Salvius carried the water home. We can identify two verbs in here. We have cursing and we have carried. Okay, so we have two ideas. We have the slave girl carry the water home, that's one idea. And we have who was cursing Salvius is my other idea. Which one of those can be its own sentence? The slave girl carried the water home. Notice that our main clause is broken, right? We have the subordinate clause in between it. Is that okay? Of course it's okay. Yeah, we can totally do that. There's no problem there. So our subordinate clause, who was cursing Salvius? That is additional information that tells us more about the slave girl. The wine which the king drank was really great. Two verbs, drank and was. The wine was great, the king drank it. Main clause, the wine was really great. Quintus is amazed by the room which Rufula prepared. Is amazed, 
prepared. Two verbs, two clauses. What's the main idea? It's that Quintus is amazed. He's amazed by the room. Uh, which roof will it prepared? That's my subordinate clause. Which roof will it prepared? Bregens holds the dog, which the king gave to Salvius. Holds, gave. Bregens holds the dog. We have some more information. Which the king gave to Salvius. There were many Britons on the road who were blocking the Romans. Were. And were blocking. Right? There were many Britons in the road. Main idea. I can put a period after that and be done with it. Who were blocking the Romans is some additional information that uh, tells us more about the Britons. That's my subordinate clause. So here are the same sentences in Latin, and we'll do the same thing before as we did before. We will identify the main clause, and we will bracket the subordinate clause. En quila quae saluim vitu parabat, aquam ad vilum portabat. Obviously, en quila aquam ad vilum portabat is my main clause, it was before, and my subordinate clause is quae saluim vitu parabat. Vinum quod rex bebebat arat optimum. Vinum arat optimum is my main clause. Quod rex bebebat is my subordinate clause. It gives us more information about the wine. Quintus ad cubiculo etonitus est. Quod rufila paravit. Quintus ad cubiculo etonitus est. He is astonished by the, the bedroom. My main idea is quod rufila paravit is my subordinate clause. It's telling us more information about the bedroom. Bregens canum tenet quem rex salvio dedit. Still, Bregens canum tenet is my main idea. He's holding the dog. Quem rex salvio dedit is my subordinate clause. Is giving us more information about the dog. In via erant multi Britanni, qui Romanos impediebant. In via erant multi Britanni is my main idea. Qui Romanos impediebant is my subordinate clause. Is giving us more information about the Brits. Let's compare the two side by side, and what is one thing they have in common? Over in the English side, you'll notice that in each of the subordinate clauses, they are started by the word who, or by the word which, right? In Latin, you'll notice that they are all started by a form of our new vocab word, qui, quae, quad, which means, surprise, surprise, who or which. These words, <clears throat> are called relative pronouns. They're relative because they relate back to something that was already stated in the sentence. The, the subordinate clauses that start with a relative pronoun are called relative clauses. Right? They all they just relate back to something already stated. Um, that who in the subordinate clause is relating back to her. Amazed by the room which, right? That which is relating back to the room. So it's all this information here is just acting kind of like an adjective to describe something that was already said. The whole clause, the purpose of the clause is to relate back to something, to some noun that was already stated to give us more information about it. The noun to which the relative pronoun refers to is called an antecedent. That's a big word. An antecedent, literally in Latin, means to fall before. Uh, whatever the who or which is, is referring to will fall directly in front of the word who or which. And therefore, that's why we call it the antecedent, to fall before. Let's do a few more just to get this thing down. So, Wilikus. Qui cum precursoribus equitabant ad saluiam redeit. The overseer, comma, who was riding with the forerunners, comma, returned to Salvius. Who was riding with the forerunners? That is our relative clause. It starts with a relative pronoun. It refers back to the overseer. The overseer is the antecedent of the relative pronoun, who. Propre UNAs erat plaustrum, quad totum viam claudebat. Near the young men was a wagon, comma, which was blocking the entire road. Quad totum viam claudebat is the relative clause, because it starts with the relative pronoun quad. Quad is referring back to the wagon. 
the wagon is the antecedent of the relative pronoun quad. Voila.